Ave Maria. Um, now listen, I, I'm seeing on the chat that sound is a little bit crackly. It's a little bit crackly for me too. So we've had a few tech issues this morning, but 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 hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be okay and everyone can hear okay. So yes, Liz, um, this is the third of of, of three um, webinars. So to give us synopsis as to where we're at, the first uh, webinar that we did was was really all around surviving. It was a 101, and 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 it was really focused on what you needed to do. And the doing was all about doing sort of four things. You know, it was appraising the market, finding the demand, appraising your business operations, finding what I call Tinder matches, uh, then going off and innovating rapidly and thinking of something that's sort of feasible, viable, and, and, and ultimately and first and foremost desirable. And then lastly, quickly reorientating the business. So that was the first session. And, and, and that's a great... Um, uh, process to follow, uh, and it, but it's a tactical play, and and the reality is 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 you know constraints lift, uh, demand shifts, competitors shift, so it's not a really strategic look at pivoting. Um, so the second session that we did was really all about reviving, and that was far more strategic, and and I shared with with everyone uh, models to use um, and pros and cons of different models i went through the sort of the tensegrity um, process um, and the five steps and 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 really it was all about actually it, the process starts with finding your who and that was the second session and then the third session today is really all about thriving and this is uh geared towards those people to your question, who's it for? It's for those people who really want to come out of this, all this disruption on top. Uh, and it's not for everyone. It's, it's for those who want to disrupt the system and ultimately who are focused on using the energy you know, of the disruption to judo chop that to actually create something that's a little bit more sustainable. And when I say sustainable, I'm meaning you know, economically sustainable. I'm meaning you know, socially and environmentally. And, and that's really where business is heading. So, so that's what today's session is all about. We're gonna, I'm going to share some more models. I'm going to share um, criteria with which to assess um, value creation. Uh, I'm going to uh, provide some powerful enablers um, for actual creation of value. And this is all about design. So last session was about discovery and today's session is all, all about design. And then I'm going to wrap it up at the end and then we'll go, as you say, into, into Q&A. So what I'll do now is I'll just share my screen and, and we'll get cracking. Good stuff. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so strategic pivoting 1303. Okay. All righty, so you remember in the model that I shared uh, last time uh, around, there's a curve here. There's a curve as to where you're at in terms of your business performance and, and moving from survive to revive to thrive. And I use the analogy of sleeping. You know, you're sleeping, snoozing, stirring, and you're, you're moving up to being um, awake and, and, and woke. And, and what I'm finding is, is the problems that people are facing. You know, at, at, the, at the base level, it's like, look, I, I don't know where to um, start. I don't know how to change. And I actually don't know what questions to ask. And that's what we covered off in the first session. And then it moves slightly a little bit more deep, deeper. And this is really about, I'm afraid of change. I'm afraid of failing. You know, I'm afraid of what the, what the future means for my business. Um, but what I'm finding is what's actually going on for people um, is really, I don't know how to appraise my, my business for value. I don't know how to create value and I don't know how to see value potential. And, and that's what I'm seeing is as much as what people are telling me what, what's going on for them and, and the problems that they're sharing and the problems that they're sharing over, over a drink or two when, you know, the truth gets revealed a little bit more intimately. This is what's actually going on um, and what, what I'm actually seeing and what actually sits underneath it all. So what I'd... Um, ask you know do is just to reflect um, where you are now and, and where do you want to be 
And I shared in the last uh, session that, that notion of the zone of consciousness. And, you know, this is all about who you are and being intimately connected in and conscious of your ecosystem and, your, and, and deeply connected in with your customers and, 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 and congruent with, with, with your purpose and, and, and redefining that. And, and that is all about um, conscious, um, uh, conscious discovery. And today's session is, is really around uh, the notion of design. So when we create value, we discover consciously and we then design mindfully. And that's the next sort of big hurdle or, or, or thing to overcome in design thinking when we think about strategic pivoting. So I'd encourage you to think about where you are and, and, and as I said, also, where do you want to be? And, and maybe, you know, just pop down on, on, on the chat, you know, with those problems that I shared. And, and when you think about that curve, you know, please just share, you know, wh where are you now? And, and, and where do you want to be? Now, I've just lost my chat box off my um, screen, which is annoying. So I can't see if people are sharing or not. Hopefully when we come out of this, I can, I can see that. But this is really useful stuff. Um, so we'll just go on to the, to the next. Um, uh, here we go. I've got it again. Brilliant. Okay, please, please. Oh, wonderful, Peter. Thank you. Awaken stage. Yep. Okay, great. That's awesome. Quite far up the curve. That's fantastic. Okay, and awake. Okay, lovely. All right, great. Thanks, Paul. Okay. All right, so in the last session, I, I shared the five steps that I use in the 10 Secret Method around redesigning your business model. And that notion of going through insight, who you are, strategy as to why, and then we go through a process of design and testing, which is the what, and then we go into the blueprinting of how. And today, as I mentioned before, we're going to be focusing on on this design aspect. And there are three parts to this. There's the ideas and concepts uh, generation, there's the uh, prototype uh, and, and, and testing that goes on uh, to create things which are desirable, feasible and viable. Uh, and then we go into sort of blueprinting that, and that's around really what your organizational model looks like, your business model, your operating model, your financial model, your marketing model. I'm not actually going to spend a whole lot of time on this today because, as I said, all of these webinars are, are speed dating um, condensed versions of, of, of uh, big workshops. Um, and we can go into that a little bit more depth in the Q&A if you've got some specific questions. But what I'd like to do is actually move swiftly on in terms of sharing some criteria. And these are six criteria. Um, which I've touched on throughout the uh, last couple of sessions, but it's nicely summarized here on a page. And these are the criteria I've developed over the years and that I find most useful um, for assessing when you create and when you innovate. And you need to come back to this continuously. It's a really useful model to have at your fingertips. And so it first starts um, with demand. And, and first and foremost, does it meet an unmet market need? And does that have strong and sustainable demand? And in IDO three circles that I've shared, this is all about desirable, being desirable. And then it's about, you know, go fast. How, how quickly can we build it and get it to market? And then those are the core things in, in survive. You don't lose them as you move on, but, but, but that's pretty much often where, where you finish and you, when you're in survive mode. Then we start going a little bit deeper and it's around actually, can we monetize this easily? You know, is it low effort? And does it provide a strong ROI? In an IDO terms, this is all about, you know, financially viable. And then can it be scaled up with minimal operational effort and footprint? In an idea, this is all about the feasibility. And these are the things that you look at when you're really trying to revive yourself. And then we move on past that to thrive. And then we look at two things. We look at strategic advantage. And, and does it actually leverage your strategic assets that differentiate you from competitors on a lasting and more sustainable basis? And this is about unlocking your pivoting assets, you know, your secret sources as I've talked about. And lastly, we look at actually your footprint in the wider ecosystem. You know, does it do no harm and ultimately does it contribute? 
And and this is a really important one because often people you know think okay that, that that's the, the the holy grail way up there hard to attain, but actually as as we see the market shifting, this is in itself is. Is, is where demand is going. So you can't look at this only as something to do at, at, at the end. This is, this is um, integral to the whole piece. So this is the five, uh, or sorry, this is the six criteria that I use uh, for pivoting um, from a design thinking perspective. So now I'm gonna share with you some enablers. And, and these enablers um, are really about how do you actually create something of value? So those six criteria that I've just shared, you know, are useful criteria to assess against, but actually the question still remains, how do I create something of value? How do I build a powerful value proposition as I go through that ideation, prototyping, testing, blueprinting phase? And this is the unknown problem that I see with all the clients that I work with. And it's, a, it's what I've seen with you guys at Ice House. And it's part of my secret source. So what I'm sharing with you is part of my secret source. You know, and the, these are four powerful enablers that I use to create value. And this is all about your what and, and, and your how. And this is all about value creation. And these aren't nice to have. They're not sideline bolt-ons. They're not tick the box kind of things. They're core design principles and they create lasting value. It's what I've used with my clients for God, over 10 years. Uh, and the thing is, is they're incredibly relevant to the situation we find ourselves in now. And each of them individually and then collectively actually work really hard to build our national strategic advantage and how together we can create um, you know, lasting prosperity. Uh, so there's a lot of synergy when you look at all four collectively. So if we start at the top in terms of emerging disruptive technology, I'm not going to go into in depth here. You know, I, 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 I teach some of this stuff over at, at um, Tech Futures Lab and, and, and my students and master's students in applied innovation. I'm not a tech expert <laughs> by no stretch of the imagination. But what I understand here is, is around value and value creation. And this is the one thing I would say here is, is it's helpful to remember that our world and how we engage in our world is entirely constructed by design. And so every problem that we face is an opportunity for redesign, which is what we are seeing right now. And this is what tech companies are doing and why they're often leading the way. And it's not just about faster, better, cheaper. It's about providing something of value that can be consumed, particularly relevant in this time right now, any time, any place. So it overcomes the hurdle of time and it overcomes the hurdle of place. And those are two significant barriers um, that, that, that um, people around the world are challenged with right now. And then we go on into the red circle around elegance. And in design thinking, we look at both form and function. And form helps create that emotional value and meaning. And this is where Apple, you know, got an incredible cut through because they thought about the micro moments of every stage in the user experience and created something that was elegant. Uh, and that was, we did it at EcoStore, you know, when I was taking them through their massive transformation, you know, and this is everything from formulations of products to packaging to marketing, right back into the supply chain. So it's elegance and systems as much as it is elegance of product or communication or user experience. And then we go on to empowerment. Now, empowerment is about a fundamental shift from you know those kind of top-down hierarchical centralized models um that and those models really support the what i'd call the financial economy um, but not necessarily the real economy and this is what we see in terms of a lot of the disruption that is is coming out right now um is is about actually creating far more decentralized models and particularly in industries i don't know who we've got on the line here but you know industries of energy and transport and tony um Sieber wrote, wrote a great book a few years back you know clean disruption and talked specifically around this notion of empowerment and decentralization and the last thing is around ethics now there's a lot here around ethics this is uh, this is about demand 
as I mentioned before, you know, this, this, is, this is growing and growing, you know, it's 30 to 40% of any market, over 60% to 70% of millennials and, 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 and Gen Zs. Um, and these are the people demanding um, accountability and transparency. This is why Amazon bought Whole Foods, you know, a few years back and, and paid, I think, what was it, $14 billion in cash, which was their largest cash, cash acquisition. Um, so it's about demand. It's also about brand health. You know, consumers are quick to interrogate, quick to spread the word, quick to change your behavior. And, and we're no longer in a black box world. We're in what's called a glass box world. You know, authenticity, the holy grail of, of marketing. Uh, so this is about what we see in terms of those brands who are really engaging in brand activism and CEO activism. It's um, what, what, you know, the likes of Patagonia that we see and often touted. It's what we did at EcoStore. Um, and so the last um, thing or the third thing there is also about this is ethics is around staff. This is about, this is about people and, and retention and, and recruitment and engagement. Um, and if you haven't already, um, the last thing I'd say is also about your supply chain. Um, supply chains are no longer um, back of stage operational bottom line cost focus. It's front of stage stuff. It's strategic top line stuff. Um, McKinsey did a great report um, a few years back in, in terms of looking at the impact of the supply chain in terms of, you know, over 90% national um, natural capital impact and, and and greenhouse gas emissions. But you've got to look at your supply chain because it's about future-proofing yourself. And in and, and the VUCA world, the market hasn't yet priced in the full system's impact of resource. Uh, and so we're starting to see far greater volatility as that stuff starts to get priced in because we're a finite world. So thinking systems builds greater resilience um, and builds greater, you know, the notion of anti-fragility. So, I'm going to give you a little bit here. This is really about embedding your technology into your business end to end. It's about creating elegant solutions inside out and outside in. It's about creating solutions with real people, real time for the real world and the real economy. And lastly, in terms of ethics, it's about guiding principles beyond the financial return that you believe in, stand for and live by. That's embedded in your business model every day. So what I'm going to share now, and I'm not going to, I'm going to go through this super quick because this is a whole workshop in, 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 in itself, but, but you actually look at sort of, there's a scale here, and I'm going to give you a scale for each one, and the scale here, you start at the bottom at number one, and then you move up. So an emerging disruptive technology, it's going from just thinking analog to digital, to faster, better, cheaper, to scale, to overcoming what I mentioned before, time and place to service as a product, and then it's circular disruption and continuous flow systems. Same again with elegance. We start at the bottom and we work our way up. In empowerment, again, we start at the bottom and we work our way up. And this is really interesting around that decentralized business model. It's around network participation. It's about understanding your agency and, and, and you know, leveraging your agency back into the supply chain. You know, ethics, you start first maybe thinking about staff and community, then maybe about carbon offsetting and then lowering your footprint, and, you know, from a cradle to cradle perspective. And then you start thinking about the notions of co-opetition and collectives and, and then moving on into, in, into circular stuff. So this is, this is stuff to think about and for you to think about, you know, where are you? on that scale and, and where do you want to be? So again, I'd encourage you in the chat box, just maybe just have a, a think about, um, you know, which one is the easiest for you? Which which one are you, do you find yourself that, you know, you can move quite quickly in? And which one is maybe the hardest? You know, I'd, I'd encourage you to sort of pop it down on the, on the chat box. Which one of those four quadrants is easier for you and which one is, is hard for you? Melissa, while they're doing that or, or thinking about that, maybe can you just, for those that haven't seen or you speak before, can you just remind them what VUCA is? VUCA, of course. Thank you. Great question. So VUCA is an acronym. It stands for the V is for volatility. And this is that price volatility particularly that I, I, I talk about. 
uh, and we'll see a hell of a lot more of that. The U is around uncertainty. You know, I, I really don't know, you know, what the future actually looks like. And this is why we start to in design thinking and be in far greater sustainable um, models. Um, the C is for chaos, you know, or <laughs> well, it could be for COVID actually, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's chaotic and, and, and it, it's messy. And, you know, I used the analogy last time, that metaphor about toiling the soil, you know, it is incredibly messy and dirty and mucky um, and chaotic, yeah? And, and often people think, you know, sure, I just want things really simple, but actually it's around embracing the complexity, but ensuring that that complexity doesn't become chaotic by being far more responsive. And this is at the essence of, of the whole notion of anti-fragile, uh, which has been talked about quite a lot. And the A is for ambiguous. And things are often ambig ambiguous because people aren't actually interrogating um, their business, their business operations, the market, um, with a, a systems-based lens. And, and they're certainly not conscious of it. And that's where a lot of ambiguity comes from. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Um, okay, so now if I just go back to my slide share. In marketing terms, the reason why we play in this um, space is because in emerging disruptive technologies, it gives you market leadership and it also gives you far greater acumen. And your elegance gives you, you know, so much uh, greater brand leadership and, and, and customer advocacy. And your empowerment gives you that tribal leadership, you know, that sense of belonging, whether it's your people or your community or, or, or your staff. And that's that notion of anti-fragility that comes in there. Uh, and then your ethics gives you leadership, um, legacy leadership. And, and that's really about, as I mentioned before, your, your authenticity. Um, the key here, and this is something a bit radical, and I'm just going to throw it out here. The key here, and this is what we use a lot in design thinking, is, is around actually biomimicry. And you're going to think, what the hell? <laughs> you know, why are you mentioning biomimicry? But actually, biomimicry is, is key to disruptive thinking. And if you're not across it, then get across it. Um, in fact, Forbes rated it one of the top trends for businesses back in 2017. And it influences not just the products and services that you might be offering, but your whole business model and your business ecosystem. And it's what I refer to, and what we refer to a lot in design thinking um, uh, circles. And it's really important um, when we think about the notion of scale, because nature scales really well, and humans don't tend to do so. And organizations and businesses, far, far less. And so we look to, um, to nature a lot when we think about scale. And there's a, a wonderful woman, um, Dr. Tamsin Woolley Barker. She's a futurist. She actually consults into a lot of the top uh, Fortune 500 companies, top tech uh, companies like Google and, 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 and so forth. And she actually goes so far as to recommend um, biologists and design innovation and in R&D hubs. Um, and she talks about radical uh, disruption. Again, I'm not going to go into um, in depth here. I just want to sow the seed that biomimicry offers um, a lot of solutions. So now we're going to move on in terms of the currency of future business. And the, and the currency of future business um, is, is really around um, thinking about um, being circular. And, and this has dominated the agenda for the last couple of years at Davos and UN Talks and World Economic Forum. And, and this is about waking up and adjusting ourselves to the simple fact that, you know, we're on a finite planet with finite resources. Um, but it's changing. You know, the full system resources haven't been priced yet into markets, but that's changing. And it's changing fast. And this is the pricing volatility that I mentioned. And so without getting caught up too much in economic conversations, there's a great design guide that you can use if you're interested in circular design. It's a, it's, it, if you type in circulardesignguide.com, it's a, a, an incredible resource. It's a free resource online. It's a collaborate, collaboration between the Ellen MacArthur Foundation uh, and IDEO. Uh, and they have a lot of toolkits to use in terms of how to think. Um, and so I'd encourage you to, um, to, to have a look. And, and the thing about the circular economy is it serves the real economy, as I mentioned. 
but it also builds our national strategic advantage. And this is where we play, where we have the opportunity to play, where we have the opportunity nationally to lift ourselves up from a, you know, a low value to a high value economy and, and really you know, take advantage of, of what we have. And our tech infrastructure is, 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 is critical to that. And, and, oh, sorry, forget the noise. I have my pussy cat who's just jumped on the table here. <laughs> um, so the thing is, and you'll see in that top left corner, the um, model that I shared with you in the last session, you know, the notion of ikigai, and this is about where do you want to play? You know, you can choose where you want to play in terms of on the left-hand side, restoring the status quo, or moving over to being far more restorative. And Peter Singh, you know, the systems-based thinker I mentioned last time, you know, has this lovely quote, you know, today's problems are often yesterday's solutions. So when we take the energy of this disruption, we can actually use it to overturn uh, yesterday's solutions. So now I'm going to move on a little bit um, in terms of actually just to, to summarise um, everything that I've, I've taken you through and, and just to give a, a bit of an overall structure and process to the last um, three webinars. And, and this is about um, the analogy that I mentioned of sleeping. Um, and actually there's a, a couple more stages in here, you know, going from, from um, you know, whether you're diving, or surviving, reviving or thriving, you're moving from sleeping to snoozing to stirring to awake to conscious to mindful and then and then to woke and, and the focus is 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 the you know reappraising and then reconnecting with your customers and then rethinking your business and then redesigning what you offer what you value and what value you can create and then resetting your organization and, and, and then ultimately reframing things and so this is the, the stages in, in the Tensegrity method, um, you know, from ecosystem exploration to customer research to strategy blueprint to ideating prototype and testing to operational blueprint and then the, the VUCA circular training that I do. So again, where are you now and, and, and where do you want to be? And so Playing back those questions, if you're at the bottom in terms of, look, I don't know how to change and I don't know where to start and what questions to ask, then, then play back that first webinar and start thinking deeply about your ecosystem. And if you're further up the chain in terms of, you know, okay, now I'm thinking a little bit more about what I need to, to uh, do more strategically, but I'm afraid of change and failure, I'm afraid of what the future means, then do some research, do your homework, and then think about what that means for you as a business. But if you're at moving on there and going, okay, well, I, I've got a clear sense of this, but I actually don't know, you know how to create value. I don't know how to appraise my business for value. I don't know how to create that value. I don't know how to see value potential. Then these are the, the things that we've shared today. And so that and 101 was really the simple Tinder matching process. And in the second webinar, it was like, what do I do? It's all about your who. It starts with your who. You know, it's a stage before Simon Sinek's why. And that's when I shared those tools and enablers. And for those of you I see on a couple on the chat, you know, some people haven't managed it, you know, go back and, and, and look on those webinar links. But today it's all about creating value. It's your what and it's your how. So use the criteria, you use the overall framework that, that, that I'm giving you and sharing with you here. And if we actually look at this, this is the, the full um, model that I take um, on my students and, and my clients through, sometimes overtly, sometimes covertly. <laughs> and this is the model, yeah, of, of moving through. And, and, and you'll see on the right hand side, you know, there's some hidden keys to this. You know, and, and the hidden keys, you know, like with you guys at Ice House, we started with systems thinking, didn't we? You know, we, we mapped out, we said, okay, what are the trends at play here? And then we went deep with, you know, customers and we really tapped it to listen to them. And I know your, your board and, you know, and Gavin, your new CEO, is like, wow, you know, how, how did you get that insight? And it's really about listening. 
And then we look at your, you know, your blueprint. And this is actually understanding lifetime value. And this is again what I said, you know how I've shifted you, you know, to think in point in time to lifetime value. And it's about reframing the risk. Now we've gone into, you know, using you guys as an example here around design solutions. And, and we've looked at multiple value lenses. We've looked at, you know, business. We've looked at co contribution and community. And then what we haven't yet done with you guys, what I do with my clients is we go into that operational blueprint and we think, you know, net present value, you know, in terms of um, uh, on the business, but we look at a multi-lens approach. And then this last one, this last one is really around presence. And that's that, you know, again, that beautiful infinity loop. You know, how do you stay present? And how do you stay present to what's happening? And, and, and the deep connection that is required to be present and connected to yourself and, and to others and to what's actually really going on. And so actually when you look at this, it's, you know, this is beyond thinking. This is moving into feeling. This is deep intuitive stuff. Um, so again, I'd encourage you um, to think about, you know, where are you now and, and, and where do you want to be? And, and wherever you are, whichever state you identify, just, you know, remember the metaphor of the butterfly, you know, and I love how Buckminster Fuller, you know, refers to it. You know, there's nothing in the caterpillar that tells you it's going to be a butterfly. So if right now you're going, shit, <laughs> excuse my language, but, you know, I think I'm a, I'm a caterpillar and I'm, I'm ugly. There's no bloody way I can become a butterfly. Just know that there is nothing in the caterpillar that tells you it's going to be a butterfly. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to come out of that. that. That's pretty much it from me. But let me stop my share. And, oh, I do have some final thoughts. Let me just give you a few final thoughts. So, look, if you're going to change, it's best to front foot it, you know, lead the change, don't have the change enforced on you, and, you know, do it properly, do it strategically, do it intentionally. Grab hold of the power of silence and stillness. I can't emphasize that enough. Silence and stillness, it helps you to think clearly and it helps you to feel deeply. It's your power source. It's the, what sits behind mindfulness and breath work, you know, it is your power source. And lastly, everything is a choice. You always have control over your choices. So if you're feeling a little bit of out of control because so much is, you see is out of control and out of your control, know that you have control over your choices you know so what's your compass of choice and lastly i'm just saying look if you need help if you want more look feel free to reach out I'm, you know if you would like a free you know 30 minute chat just get in contact with me those are my deets you can do that via my website you can text me you flip me an email or connect with me on on, on linkedin